Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 23 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today, I've just updated the pack to version 1.3, and that means something very cool. You ready? You ready for what's in the new version of the pack? Boom! Oh, do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? It means Morph is in the pack. Booyah! Morph is back uh, for version uh, 1.12 of uh, Minecraft, and you can totally morph from one creature to the next. Oh yeah, that's what's up. I'm excited to see Morph back. Uh, definitely a mod that I've missed. <gasps> Yay, I can be a chicken now. I had to remember how Morph works, if I'm being honest. Uh, isn't there like, there's like, there's like a favorites key or something or something? I don't know, I have to check out mod option, no options. Controls. Does Morph have a control section? I don't know if uh, it does, but hopefully it does. Morph, 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 morph. Okay, maybe not. I don't see Morph. Uh, so we'll have to figure out if there's some kind of Morph thingy. I, I remember there's like a favorites thing where you can like flag a Morph as a favorite and then like it'll show up on the list higher up or something. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Hello, cow. Ooh, I can be a cow now. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, loving it. Excited for Morph and, uh, all the potentials therein. So, uh, we've got Morph and, uh, obviously a bunch of mods have updated and everything too. So no big deal there. Um, I also cleaned up my, my oak trim. Now that I decided to have, um, the drawers, I basically put oak trim in the corners there. And now, you know, my drawer system connects and, and there's less of a mess downstairs wiring wise. Um, I could probably clean up wiring a little bit more if I really wanted to. Like technically what I should do is remove these guys and run that. That, that that would be nicer, right? So a little bit of wiring cleanup. Um, so last episode, we did a lot with auto-crafting, right? We learned how to auto-craft a bunch of stuff, uh, like this stuff uh, that we need to auto-craft. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we, we have some basic auto-crafting going on here. I'd like to continue along that tradition of working on auto-crafting things. Uh, and then I'd also like to maybe get into some, some other mods and stuff. But uh, before I do that, I said I was going to go uh, mining between episodes, and I didn't. So I think I'm going to go do that now. Um, let's, let's pop over to our mining dimension. I'm going to do a little bit of mining, and then we will come back. Where's cobblestone? There it is. Uh, we'll come back after I've mined, and we'll maybe set up the um, export bus that's going to require it for ore processing. So I will see you guys in a moment. All right, guys. feel like I did enough ore mining for the time being, mostly indicated by the fact that I ran out of torches. Uh, so that's fine. Let's pop on home and see uh, what's my situation with power at the moment, by the way. I haven't really been paying a lot of attention. So we have some refined fuel in there. Uh, we're generating RF around 120 RF a tick is being piped into something. Uh, out of curiosity, what are we actually using over here? 74. So we're currently using 75 RF a tick just to maintain our refined storage system. Uh, remember I told you we were going to get to a point where we needed to have a lot of that going on? So yeah, we've gotten to that point. Uh, so we'll let this guy recharge himself a little bit. That should be cool. Uh, and I can put away a lot of this stuff. So uh, what I'll basically do, I mean, I can put it away either way, but for now, let's just... So a lot of things... Hey, I have a bat down here? Now I can be a bat. Uh, real quick about Morph, by the way. Um, the features that gave different uh, creatures uh, special abilities, like the ability for bats to fly, is not implemented yet. So uh, there is no, like, you get a special ability when you turn into a bat. So there's no free flight with bats. Sorry. Just the way it is. Uh, so this guy filled up, by the way, nicely. Boom. So that should all import into the system and appropriately route. Nice. Boom. Get the rest of it in there. Nice. Loving it. Uh, you guys can come out. You can be eaten. This is what a little mining uh, excursion looks like when I'm all done. It's basically, hey, I accomplished a bunch of good stuff. And we drop off a bunch of good loots. All right, so now we should have ores available to us in the system that we're going to need to teach this thing how to deal with, right? Uh, so we've got iron, quartz. I don't think I'm going to process eulorium yet. But silver and lead we should process. Star metal, gold, copper. 
what else? Nickel, tin, aluminum. These are the types of things we might want to process. So I've got nine here. I'm pretty sure I had eight configured down on this guy. So which one did I not have? So I wasn't processing black quartz ore. Probably should. So we're going to add that to the export bus. So um, exporters. So did we teach you how to make an importer? We didn't. Um, exporters and importers are going to be used to the point where uh, export exporters are probably a smart thing to get added here. So how are we for the ability to make patterns? Really, it's just glass. Glass, 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 glass. Cobble works, I think, should be in my immediate future, uh, if I was being honest. Like, really immediate, like maybe this episode or next. Because I'm getting kind of tired of not having sand and glass and gravel in a coherent manner. Um, you have how much sand on you? Pretty much none. Okay. So I guess what I'll do is uh, smelt up some glass. And maybe go, I'm going to go hit up a little bit of a sandy area to get some, some glass and some sand. Um, but just to get like past this point, and then we will do better in a minute. So how about I come back in a minute after I've collected a bunch of sand. And then uh, maybe we'll work on a cobble works really soon. All right, that's probably enough sand. Huzzah! Are you done charging? Yay. That'll let this thing refill. Okay, so let's throw like another stack of sand in here. And in the meantime, uh, I can take this guy and put away some of the junk that I got, including some sand and glass. Cool. And to-do list, wireless access to this guy. All right, so if I wanted about 20 patterns now, that shouldn't be a hard request. It'll make them all and that'll be good. So I made the pattern for the exporter. Let's go ahead and, while we're here, importer pattern. You know what else I might want? A crafter pattern. Because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need another crafter pretty immediately. So if I requested a crafter, do we have everything we need for that? Now we're missing machine casing, destruction core, and construction core. Okay. Um, so crafter, so you need to know how to make this guy. You need to know how to make this guy and a machine casing. Which I'm probably gonna pull out just for a second here, these two, so that these guys can go in. So I can put in the request for a crafter. Boom, and that'll do all the crafting required for that. I should build a crafting monitor of some kind so we can see what's happening. Crafting monitor, that doesn't look so bad. So we just need another improved two patterns and a casing. So the improved should be working on right now. They're pretty quick to craft, remember, but I need to speed up the the item routing stuff. So if I put this up here, oops, that should show me what's currently crafting, right? So if I requested another crafter, we can see that what's happening here and you can see what things are currently happening. So like the construction core and the destruction core are waiting for items. The items that are currently being processed are the two advanced processors and the two crafting processors, um, that's happening downstairs. And then once they're completed, uh, it'll it'll do its thing basically, so that should be cool. So see, look, it finished those two guys. Now it's working on the basic processors, um, and then once they're done, we'll see it crafting those other things pretty quickly, and then the crafter's done. Neat. Just a nice, uh, handy way to track what's you know being worked on. Okay. So now I should be able to make an exporter, no problem. I'm missing cable, so you should probably learn how to make cable. All the things that you want to teach your refined storage system how to make in one fell swoop. Okay. So how do we want to do this? Because we're definitely going to want an importer of some kind, or we could do an interface type thing. 
That might work too. Um, thinking interface might be a good route to go. Um, and I think we can get to a point where we have even better ore processing with uh, strictly refined storage, but we'll see. Uh, so is it called interface? It's called interface, refined storage. So that's made with an importer, an exporter, and a machine casing in a solderer. So what if we taught that? Cool. And we dropped it in here. So if I requested that real quick, what would happen is it would send all the things that it needs to make, you know, the, the core requisite stuff, right? Uh, the importer and the exporter. And then it's going to drop those things into the solderer. Cool. So once it has the importer and exporter and the machine casing, it'll go in here. And then I'm going to whitelist them in here. Does that sound cool? So once it's got those things, then it should auto craft them into here. These need to get whitelisted into here so that when they do get dropped into here, they're routed appropriately. And it hopefully is smart about it. Oh, right. I had two of those. That's fine. The reason I had one of those in my inventory, remember? So you know now how to make interfaces, which is cool because that's another really useful item. So let's come back here and rearrange how some of this works. Uh, so at this point, the way things work, so this was a filter. We probably don't need you anymore. Um, what's going to be done instead, right? So right now, um, underneath here is where we were extracting the ores and inserting them into these guys. Oh, and you are back stuffed. Look at you, a cinnabar ore. Cinnabar. Okay, so what I should do is change the configuration. This should instead be red goes to the up, and we'll put what's in the back here. I'm going to need another signal and plated item duct. Good, I have some. I need two of them. That's exactly what I have. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to set you to output to the back the this thing. So what will happen here is kind of annoying. So there's a couple ways I could go about fixing this. So right now, like if I process copper, sometimes I'll get like gold dust. Um, and I would want that to be smelted. But things like cinnabar, which block this, are the only thing I'd like to output to the back. Um, so to make that a reality, let's get another hardened servo here. Let's do it this way. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make the up be both of these things. And then the back will be the only thing that can access this one. So up direction will be both. So if it can be smelted, it'll be pushed up. But that's not entirely accurate right now. Um, and then same here, up direction will be both these slots. Um, but I no longer want you to auto output. I'm going to disable the auto output. Um, and what I'd like to do is get a hardened machine upgrade. What are the chances that I can make one of these? I can-ish. Just need some invar. Uh, to do is teach you how to make invar. So nickel and two iron. Into the induction smelter you go. I think with a hardened upgrade, um, we're going to see if I'm right about this, but I think... I, if, I, if I hardened upgrade you, does that mean that you can auto input enabled. Cool. So you can auto input. Oh, you can auto input on basics. Okay, cool. I, I, in the past, I thought auto input was not available on basic, but maybe that changed. But basically what I'm going to do is say, don't auto output from here, auto input on this one. So basically the redstone furnace will pull from beneath. Um, and then on the back here, I'm going to want the cinnabar. Do we have any cinnabar? Just so I can, I do, okay, good. <coughs> so what I'm gonna do is remove you and you. Instead, we're gonna put the two of these dudes. Uh, you're gonna get these and we will whitelist Cinnabar. So only, why you know let me whitelist?
That's weird. I think I just found a bug. Might have just found a bug. Neat. Can I whitelist you? Why is it raining in my face? Okay, cool. I didn't realize that. Uh, psh. Gravel, all the things. Dirt. Cool. All right. Um, hmm. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Why? Okay, I can whitelist on this. Can I not whitelist? I can. So that's a hardened servo. This is a hardened servo. Am I missing something here? How come I can I can whitelist this dude all day long? My head is tilting very hard to the left at the moment. If I pick this up and place him back down, he works. Oh! Ha! <laughs> okay. I figured it out. These are signal and plated fluid ducts, not item ducts. I was gonna say... Signal and plated fluid ducts, not item ducts. My bad. I didn't find a bug. I am just a derp. Alright, so you, you, you're gonna be whitelisting Cinnabar. You're going to be whitelisting Cinnabar. So now the only thing that can be pulled out of here is Cinnabar. Uh, so let's see if I'm correct about this. If I set you to ignored, you have nowhere to go. So that's a thing. So let's make sure that our uh, interface is here. So that should be an import slot for the interface. So this will start processing again. Cool. Um, and that should all behave itself pretty well. Nice. And then that will be pulled up because we have this guy configured to auto input enabled. And then he'll auto output to the back. So now we just have to set up a couple more things. So we're going to want to set up the export bus here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine items can be export bust. Uh, and then we'll run some cabling. Like so. Okay. Um, that's not terrible. Not 100% ideal, but it'll work. So you should start exporting all those things, including the ones that I have in my inventory. Sure, why not? And then they'll get extracted uh, when we set you to ignore it again. You'll go in there and get stuff. So they'll start pulling stuff out. They'll start going into the pulverizers. Right. Oh wait, did I leave a whitelist in here? Empty blacklist. Now you're cool. There we go. Beautiful. So that's pretty cool. So now if Cinnabar gets stuck in our thing, that's how we're going to work around it. Oh, and you should probably be uh, Redstone Ignored as well. So if Cinnabar ever gets stuck in there again, what was it that caused Cinnabar to get stuck out of curiosity? It was Gold has a chance to do Cinnabar? Okay. It's good to know. Redstone has a good chance, but we're not pulverizing redstone at the moment, right? Uh, so gold is the one that has the chance to cause Cinnabar to get stuck. All right, so that should solve that. And then you, the way the interface works is anything uh, that lands in the interface import slot will automatically get sucked into the system. It's like a built-in import bus. But you can also tell it to keep certain items stocked uh, if you have them. So for example, uh, I don't know, but let's say uh, we wanted to keep have a stack of cobble inside this slot for some reason. We could do that, and anytime we removed cobble from it, it'll auto restock it. It's pretty nice. Uh, so if you had like the need to, you know, pipe that somewhere through item ducts, it would totally uh, work out for you. Cool. All right, so we've got um, ore processing back up and running. Let's get cobblestone back in here. I I know I always say this, and I apologize because I always say this, but I really need to clean up my basement. <laughs> I know I really need to clean up my basement. It's a mess, but, you know, things happen sometimes and whatnot. Can't control it. 
messes messes happen when you're not at a super high tech level. But we're getting to a super high tech level. So auto processing of ores, check. Uh, cleanup of cinnabar, check. Let's come back in a second. All right, guys. So I think if we really want to start ticking up through thermal expansion and among other things, uh, a bunch of other mods that I really want to get into, uh, one of the first things we're going to need to do is start automating a lot of these machines. So the pulverizer smelting would probably be nice to have automated. Uh, the induction smelter, absolutely. So we can get electrum and invar and all that stuff. And if we want to be able to automate signalum and eventually uh, enderium, we're probably going to want to automate the crucible and the fluid transposer. So all these machines need to be automated um, pretty much with my refined storage system, uh, basically using crafters, right? Uh, so if we want to do that, we basically have two options, and I'm trying to wrestle with how I want to do it right now in my brain. Uh, option one is to run the refined storage system over to here, which we'll probably want to do one way or another eventually anyway, uh, and hook them up to the existing machines that we have up here. The downside with that is if my system's currently auto-crafting and I want to use any machines, they will be tied up um, for me to use them manually for any auto-crafting that's going on. Option two uh, would basically be to, 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 to set up a bunch of machines over here, which is pretty much what I usually do. I usually have one set of machines that are dedicated to... Um, manual use so like i'm upstairs and i want to make something real quick i can pop over and make them real fast and then another set of machines that are get dedicated to the to the refined storage or ae system that automate it so i'm probably leaning towards this method now you guys have already seen me make this line of machines so what i'll probably wind up doing is the one two three four five machines that we want to automate right now uh will probably land over here or by themselves magically off camera as part of a cut so what I'll do is kind of map that out. So let's come back in a minute. And, and part of what I'm going to do um, is, is make it so that like redstone furnace, for example. Um, most of these machines require machine frames and reception coils in some form of gear. I'm going to also uh, spend a little bit of time teaching the system how to make these. So no longer do I have to manually craft this stuff. That was the wrong button to click. Uh, let's shift click you. Uh, it was supposed to be in not or processing mode. Uh, so like, for example, tin gear, boom. Now you know how to make tin gears. Now you know how to make machine frames. Now you know how to make these guys. Uh, we might also want you to know how to make copper gears. Uh, and while we're at it, maybe teach you the other forms of gear. So bronze gear, for example. Right. Um, and how to make bronze is like that. So if I throw all these guys into this stuff, you know now how to make, for example, machine frames times five, because that's how many I'm gonna need, and reception coils times five. So now we're like literally halfway towards um, the, the, the crafting of the furnace and everything. So let me go make those off camera real quick. We'll be right back. Okay, so that's the last of the items. Um, Oh, let's do flux ducts. Should be cool. Um, for that. over here. So we'll probably want to run these flux ducts here. So my basic idea for this and how this will work is we'll do let's do furnace first, pulverizer next, induction smelter, magma crucible, and fluid transposer in much the same way. Uh, that we did everything else, right? I'm going to close off all the sides for a minute, though I will set you to output to the right and you to input from the left. I'll probably drop items in the top and pull items out the bottom when they're done crafting, and we'll probably power from behind. Does that sound like a kind of a plan? So uh, with that said, we can run like that, uh, and maybe I'll sneak into my underground area here. Where am I relative to my base? There we go. And run some powering like this. So technically I could probably just run it back here and that would be fine. So you guys should be getting power now. Nice, that's cool. Okay, like the look of that. So with that said, uh, you guys all have power now. 
Now let's get, uh, pretty much what I'll do is I'll want five crafters. So in total that needs more silicon. So one of the things I'll be, you know, teaching this thing how to do is make silicon. Basically we'll say that nether quartz equals silicon. And once that's done, we no longer have to manually smelt silicon when we want to make stuff, right? That's one of the many recipes that we're going to be teaching uh, all this stuff. And once you start getting into auto crafting, it's like an addiction and you want to auto craft all the things. It's crazy. Um, so we will have those sides of the machines available to us. We will get to a point probably where we have um, more than, let's say, I think it's nine crafting recipes that you can have. So let's see, crafters times five now. Looking good, cool. So lots of things that need to be crafted for this, but that's fine, right? Boom, 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 boom. Everything's gonna work out pretty well. Should be good, in theory. And this is a good time to like test and find out, hey, are we gonna get uh, in trouble with anything? We may at some point wanna have a dedicated um, uh, solderer for silicon, for example, uh, and maybe some other things getting stuck along the way, but we'll see. But overall, that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, we will have probably also, once that's all done crafting, how are you guys doing there? Lots of stuff to be made, but it's come along nicely. Cool, and now you'll be exporting your 10 of these dudes. Cool, and those guys are, are processing, beautiful. Uh, the next thing I'm probably going to want is an interface. We'll make sure nothing gums up around here either. Because it's very possible that these machines will at some point jam because like the wrong things were added to them. But I'm interested to see if and when that happens. So that's cooking up. That will get those things and then these things should drop in. Okay, cool. Nice. So those guys will fill in. Boom. Nice. And then drop all those items in. Good. And that'll be my interface. So crafters times five. Interface times one. And we've got some cables, but we might need a few more. So eh, that might be enough. So what I'll have is basically One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Um, and then I will probably have, kinda wanna put this in the corner. Cool. So you guys will all be set blue on the top, orange on the bottom. And you'll also auto output enabled on the bottom. Cool. Blue on the top, orange on the bottom. Okay, now technically we only need one of these crafters here and we'll, we'll configure that in a minute. So that'll have to be a little bit different. Um, but if we put item ducks along the bottom here, orange on the bottom, and they're all set to auto output, what we should wind up with just so I can have a block here. Eventually I might have another machine here, but we'll see. Uh, we should wind up with a system where I can say, hey, if I wanna teach you how to make silicon, for example, right, you're made by smelting, right? So we do the ore processing thing. We say one quartz becomes one silicon. I'm gonna take these out. We put silicon into the crafter here, boom. Uh, we hook this stuff up with some cabling, uh, which will probably be done behind the walls here a little bit. There is wireless, by the way, uh, stuff that you can do in refined storage, but it drastically increases the power demands, and we are not in a position where I feel comfortable drastically increasing power demands. If that makes sense to you guys, which I'm, I'm imagining it all you, you would understand that. Cool. So let's run. Parallel to our power line here. We can just run like this. Cool, so that should light up 
everything in this room, this should all be now active. So for example, we can demonstrate this. Anything that goes into the import should get sucked into the system. Perfect. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, and then we can cover up the walling here a little bit. Nice. So let's say that we wanted to make silicon, right? Let's say we wanted 10 of them. Boom. It should automatically drop 10 nether quartz in here. Now it's going to be a little bit slow because we haven't sped things up yet, but that's fine. And the auto output should push it to the bottom, which it did. You can see that happening right there. And then it's going to make its way slowly but surely. I'm going to speed these item ducks up with things later, uh, but it'll make its way over to the interface import, which will then cause it to basically get sucked into the refined storage system and we're good to go. Nice, right? How cool is that? So we've got some automated processing. So for example, if we wanted to make invar uh, ingots, we would say that you're done in the induction smelter and your process is to use this. So now we know how to make invar. And if we want electrum, uh, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, induction smelter, these guys, right? So we drop these two recipes into this machine and now you know how to make uh, invar. So if we need an invar, we should see this machine is now running. It's gonna process the invar, it'll push it out the bottom, and it'll make its way over to this guy. Beautiful. All right, so that's probably a good wrapping up point for this episode. Um, throughout the next few episodes, I will probably be taking great advantage of these things so uh, that we can start creating. So for example, if I want to get upgrade kits, Remember how painful the processing of creating these are? Uh, it shouldn't be too bad now because we can teach it how to make signalum, we can teach it how to make electrum, we can teach it how to make cryothium dust. All these things can be taught uh, and then we'll kind of start you know, working up from there. So now that we have some basic auto processing and auto crafting in place, um, we can really kind of advance further and further throughout the different mods and, and have more automation and more fun playing with stuff. For now, Dowel20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and uh, probably work on more automation, but I'm pretty close to the point where I'm going to take a break maybe from doing some automation or we're probably also getting to the point where you guys have seen the many different ways to automate with refined storage. So you'll see me doing more and more off-camera automation uh, and more and more on-camera new things. Um, so for now, take it easy.